A castle has stood at the heart of Windsor for nearly a thousand years. Davine has come here to meet architectural historian Simon Bradley. I find it hard to marry up the idea of him being a stonemason in this portrait of this quite smart man. So I was wondering what sort of... I mean, stonemasonry, it's a very physical job, isn't yes, it? What would he have yes. been doing? Well, he starts doing fairly rough work. And in fact, the very terrace we're walking on, one of his early jobs when he was working at Windsor was reconstructing it. So you may be walking on James Bedborough. Uh, but that's fairly... Do you know what I think is amazing? Uh -huh. I think it's amazing that you're an architectural historian and you know my great-great-great-great-grandfather. Ah, uh, well... <laughs> he's not just a mason, he is the mason. He is the king's master mason. So he's got the plum job. In 1820, George IV inherited the throne and promptly ordered an extravagant makeover of the castle inside and out. It would take more than a decade and cost the country over a million pounds. It was the perfect chance for James Thomas Bedborough to showcase his skills. The Windsor Castle of today that the state visitors come to is basically George IV. That's so gorgeous, isn't it? It is, it is. George IV is a showman, you know, he wants things to look impressive. It's so now, lovely. I can show you a picture. Oh, yes, please. Uh, these are the architect's drawing, <gasps> but look up top left, because that's what oh, we're looking at now. the whole new... That's the round tower, one of Bedborough's wow, really so the whole, major all works. all that stonemasonry on the top, the flowery bit... Flowery? Yep. Sorry, but you don't get, get it called that very often. The, 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 the battlements and machicolations. Thank you, the called. machicolations. Uh -huh. It's the two the stories two... below the battlements. Oh, really? And that's pretty well the junction wow, between so the old work enormous. and the new work. that's enormous. Yep. It's a sort of like a child's dream of the Middle Ages. Yes. Or a Hollywood dream yes. of the Middle Ages. From his early days as a humble apprentice stonemason, James Thomas Bedborough had risen to the height of his craft, working on the most prestigious building project of the age. And beyond the castle walls, new opportunities were opening up. So James does a lot, but he doesn't stop in Windsor Castle because he carries on building into Windsor Town. As it starts to grow, Windsor spreads out from the historic part, pushing west, and Bedborough gets in there. The key area is along Claremont Road and around Clarence Crescent. Yes. This is part of a big development. So he um, basically bought this piece of land. He buys the land and develops, and develops it. it. <gasps> yeah. And there's more. Yes. Uh, there's Grove Road. There's a terrace of houses there. What, the whole the terrace? Yeah. Yeah, but it's it, in terms of scale, uh, it's not, it's, as, big it's as, not as grand as bit. Clarence Crescent, Dorset Road, Trinity right. Place, Claremont Road, Clarence Road. That what became known as the Bedborough Estate, in fact. Did it? Uh, at least within Windsor. Really? So very, very large scale development there, um, and you can see you can compare it to the size of the town. So I mean, he really was an entrepreneur. Mm, yes, yes. I want to go um, and see it. In the late 1820s. Britain was in the midst of the Industrial Revolution. Opportunities abounded for ambitious property developers, and Windsor, which for centuries had been little more than a garrison town, was booming. James Thomas Bedborough seized the chance and set about developing a whole new neighbourhood, known at the time as the Bedborough Estate. This would be it. These roads up here it's amazing. It's an enormous area. It's very posh, actually. Very smart. Very lovely. I walked round the corner and there I was faced with a whole area that one of my ancestors built and developed. I mean, was he one of those developers that everybody's up in arms about, or was it a popular thing, or...? I mean, how did he suddenly go from stonemason to developer? It's a big jump. And where did he live? I know that Upton Park fits in here somewhere. 